Here to break it down, the dynamic duo of Danny Cannell and Jesse Palmer. We have all just found out about this uh, literally within the last couple of minutes. What's your initial reaction, Jesse? Uh, not surprised. I think if you're at USC, you're expected to compete for Pac-12 championships. That hasn't been the case in Lane uh, Kiffin's tenure so far at USC. Off to a bad start this year, obviously at three and two. And you look at the struggles this team has had this year, only seven points of offense and a loss early in the season to Washington State. You get gash for over 60 points in a loss last night against Arizona State. Right. The tenure for Lane Kiffin didn't begin easy at, at uh, USC because of NCAA sanctions surrounding Reggie Bush. They couldn't compete for Pac-12 championships. They had scholarship restrictions. What happened last year is what put Lane Kiffin on the hot seat. Remember, they started the year preseason number one. Right. They had Matt Barkley, Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, all this firepower. They finished 7-6. and six. They were no longer the dominant team in L.A. UCLA has taken that stance right now. Starting the way they've started this year, I have to say, to me, not surprising Lane Kevin's been fired. And to your point about L.A. in general and recruiting, yeah. maybe making this move at this point in the season has quite a bit to do with that. That's got to be the reason why. Because, I mean, I've never seen a program go where they fire their coach midseason and they get things turned around. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where you're looking ahead to the future. And for me, it was very clear Lane Kiffin was on the hot seat entering into this season, not only because of the preseason ranking last year, but also the way the season ended last year. They had some issues at the bowl where their team was either late or missed some bowl functions. You know, they just had several issues, and it really felt like Lane Kiffin lost his team. And that's always what I want to look for as a head coach. You know, do the players still play hard for him? And that was in question. I think that's why he got axed. And when you look at Pat Hayden, a, a former star himself, and a guy who has taken the reins there, who inherited Lane Kiffin. You know, as much as Lane Kiffin inherited sanctions, uh, Pat Hayden came in to clean up that program, and he inherits Lane Kiffin. If you look at USC football, at the tradition, at, at what Hayden wants to mold this team into, what is it? It's a national championship contender year in, year out, and they have the facilities, they have the tradition, they have the ability to recruit some of the best players in the entire country. There's no excuse why this team, with the players they're able to get, with the coaches that they can hire, and with the tradition they have, why they shouldn't be at least competing for Pac-12 uh, titles each and every season. And there are probably five programs in college football where you can go out and you can get whoever you want, and USC is one of them. I mean, they have the best facilities, they've got the best you know, access to you know, the best high school players in the state of California, and they've got tradition, history on their side. So Pat Hayden is going to have the luxury of being able to go out and pick basically whoever he wants. All right, in the meantime, what are we looking at there in terms of uh, perhaps offensive, defensive coordinator, who takes the reins at USC? We don't know, but who's available? John Baxter right now, the associate head coach, special teams coordinator, guy Lane Kiffin just hired two years ago. Clancy Pendergast, the D coordinator they brought in from Cal a season ago. I would assume right now, without knowing necessarily, those would probably be the two guys they look at right now to take over the reins never easy to take over a team midway through the season as you mentioned you don't see it very very often I remember a few years ago we saw Mike Stoops fired at Arizona midway through the year that was a difficult transition period for any team to have to carry on and quickly Lane Kiffin uh, bouncing around uh, a bit in the last few years and uh, there's a lot of talk uh, about him uh, besides simply X's and O's and what's on the football field uh, what do you envision for his future I think he's a guy and you, this happens a lot it's not a knock on something Somebody, but they're probably a better coordinator than they are a head coach. I mean, just seeing the way he dealt with the media, but you saw the success he had with play calling earlier in his career, the development of the quarterbacks. I think that might be the position he's best suited for.